What's good everybody, it's your boy Eddie here and welcome back to the channel and I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And for today's video, we actually have a very special release a couple of days early before the official release date. But before we even continue guys, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell. And what we got right here is none other than the Nike Air Max 1 and the 1986 Big Bubble iteration. And I have to say guys that although the Big Bubble may be a little bit hard on the eyes and hard to get used to at first, I have to say when you compare it to the modern or retro version of the same exact sneaker, this actually looks way cleaner and way sleeker compared to that newer retro version and although I don't have the 2017 anniversary edition of the same exact colorway based on a the comparison there are differences between the shape of the shoe just due to that simple change of the air bubble and again personally for me I'm gonna have to rock with these versus the 2017 pair although there is some differences on the midsole that I do like on the 2017 or retro version compared to the 1986 version but ultimately guys this is gonna lead up to what your personal preference is at the end of the day so if you prefer the big bubble get the big bubble version or if you like the modern or retro version of it you can go ahead and pay that bread up for that 2017 pair or just get a modern different colorway because there's a lot of air max ones that have been dropping a lot of heat especially the bata collaborations that they've been having because those joints are super fire i love the wavy details on it and the white blue and orange colorways are super dope and just look great with pretty much any type of outfit and the air max ones in general just go with any type of outfit whether you're wearing shorts some ripped jeans or any of that type of stuff they look great and i may be bringing the sneaker on my trip so be sure to stay tuned to my ig if i post any fire flicks with these but anyways guys let's just go into the box details because this is one of my favorite things about this whole entire release it is not an og box and it does have that kind of reimagined off-white feel to it and i think that's what sets this apart other than the fact that it is the big bubble to the other air max one releases so when we look at the top of the lid we do have this nike check in this translucent cutout so you could actually see the inside of the box that is definitely 100 screaming virgil abloh to me in my opinion and we do have these kind of like red different scratches all over the black box which gives it this kind of reimagined or distressed look because again guys when you think about it the sneaker is almost 40 years old and still a heavy hitter in today's sneaker market which is crazy to say then when we look at the front of the box you can see those four circular translucent cutouts which is basically to mimic the big bubble itself and i think that's a very nice detail as well then when we go into this side we have more of that distressed cutting as well as that Nike logo right there. And then when we go into the back side of the box, we do have more of those translucent cutouts, which is pretty nice. Next, when we go into this side of the box, we can see our sticker tag right there. And it does read off as Nike Air Max 186 OG. And the colorway shown is white and university red. And I went with my true to size of a size eight. And I 100% recommend that everybody who wants to shoot to get it in their true to size as well, because it fits me completely perfect. It's not too loose, it's not too tight. Fit is just right in the middle and just perfect, which I personally enjoy. Then when we open this lid right here, we have some more off-white-ish details, because I know this is an old to ticker hat feel. And if you guys saw that sneaker live with Jamerson, Tiona, and Will as well, that was a very nice presentation and interview that they did with both Tinker and Clint and big shout out to the sneakers live team. So then when we look at this right here, we do have some more tissue paper. And if you guys look at it, to me, it truly resembles Off-White. So if you guys ever had the Off-White Converse's or just bought anything from Off-White, the tag itself did have that kind of like construction look to it. And that's exactly what the wax tissue paper inside this box had. So I don't know if there's some little tributes to Virgil in there or it's just like a coincidence or something like that. But I can't call that a coincidence because that's literally what Virgil has been using for his off-white collaborations or his off-white brand as a whole. So now guys, let's just briefly go over the inspiration behind the shoe. And it's actually pretty simple. So if you guys missed out on the sneakers live yesterday that pretty much presented this sneaker and did like a whole tribute and kind of like conceptual ideation of what this is, the whole entire thing is that this was the first iteration that was released to the public for the Nike Air Max 1 and it was like a big hit in the streets. However, when that sneaker released and when it finally got cold, the bubble itself actually used to crack. So basically, if you got your sneaker in the summer, the moment you wore it in the cold, that joint was done. Like it was cooked, it's gonna break and then you can no longer wear your shoes, which obviously poses a big problem financially for Nike as well as a public reputation. So now when we look at 1987 where they re-released a sneaker and then that's how we got that nice modernized little bubble, which is pretty cool when you think about it because the updated version was made for functional purposes, not for a look. But with that, it took over the identity of what the original Nike Air Max 1 was, which is this big bubble right here. And you guys could probably see my hand moving through it, which is again, a really nice detail which serves both a functional and visual aspect, which I really enjoy about the shoe. And that's pretty much it when you think about the 
history and inspiration behind the shoe. This was actually Tinker Hatfield's first sneaker that he ever created, which is crazy to think that. Then they just made a little bit of an update for functional purposes. And now with today's technologies and advancement, you can actually wear this on all types of weather. So if you wanna wear this sneaker in the fall, winter, wouldn't recommend wearing it in the snow, but pretty much all weathers you can wear this shoe now, which I think goes to show how far technology has advanced when it comes to sneakers. Something else to know guys is that I don't think that this is going to be a regular thing. I think they're going to choose specific Air Max 1 colorways, but I don't think this is going to become the new standard of the Air Max 1 when you look at the current colorways and iterations of that retro bubble. I think it's gonna stay like that. So be sure if you really want the shoe to copy because we don't know if this is going to be the only one that they do or if they put another OG colorway and just slap the big bubble on it. So guys, that's pretty much going to conclude the history and inspiration behind the shoe. So now let's just get right into the details of it. So we're going to start off with the toe box like we normally do. And this is just a standard Nike Air Max 1 toe box. I do believe for this release, they did make the toe box a little bit wider than normal releases, which is interesting to note because for me personally, when I bought the original Nike Air Max 1 Patas, the orange Monarch pair, it fit me pretty tight. But then when I got the white pair, it fit me normally like any Air Max 1 would fit. So again, I would 100% recommend going through the size because it does have that nice little wide space to it. It's not like loose or anything, it just fits perfect. And then we have our standard Air Max 1 mud guard that surrounds the whole entire upper of the shoe, which I really like. And it's in this new book material. Then when we go into the top of the shoe now, you can see that we have this gray new book surrounding the eyelets right there. Then we do have our standard white laces. And under those laces, we do have our same mesh tongue, which is a similar color to the toe box. Then when we go into the top of the tongue tag, this is some more OG detailing right there. We do have that Nike Air Max tab, which which I think looks really nice and has that kind of orange insert in it to make the shoe pop. Then when we go into the lateral side of the shoe, you can see that we have more of that Nubuck mud guard right there. And we do have some hits of the mesh as well as more of that gray Nubuck. Then we have our standard Nubuck Nike check right there. Then when we go into the back heel area now, you can see that this Nubuck paneling actually goes way higher than the standard or retro Nike Air Max 1. So you actually have less of the exposed mesh showing right here. But I personally believe that this creates a more balanced look to the back heel area now because we do have that nice mesh still showing, but it's not taking over the whole entire back heel area and with that allows the nike air logo to be more centered on the shoe in my opinion that's how it looks to me and that's why i prefer this og look compared to the retro version then right below that we have more of that red new book which wraps into the medial side as well and the same thing pretty much follows suit so i'm not going to spend too much time here but one more thing that i do want to note that nike doesn't do anymore is the fact that we do have our sizing tag right there on the inner lining of the ankle area and you can see that it does show size eight right there and that's just an og detail again that's something that they did in their earlier years from like the 80s and 90s but they don't do it anymore because they're just like hey that's just a waste of a print. Let's just put it on a sizing label as well as a sticker tag outside of the box. But still, sometimes I've seen where people actually put the wrong shoe size in the wrong box and that, that's not even important for this review. So anyways, guys, let's just focus on to what's the most important thing about this shoe, which is the midsole and that big bubble. But personally for me, this is what I would say that the retro model has a one up on for this 86 model is that the midsole doesn't have those extra striations or lines that are on the retro version of this model. I do wish that this updated model had like the retro look to it with those extra lines striations that go in the midsole but that's okay i'm not going to complain about that and then when we focus on that big bubble you can actually see right through it i could actually see the camera that i'm looking at maybe you guys can see my hand moving through the bubble i'm really not sure and then finally guys when we look at the outsole of the shoe you can see that we have that standard air max one traction pattern i think it's a little bit wider in comparison to the retro models but again no significant changes to report to you guys and then one more final detail that i want to show you because that's pretty much the whole entire shoe the right shoe looks exactly like it so there's nothing to report on that but something that we do have is this nice insole guys i love this insole on the air max one it looks so nice i'm not sure if you guys are going to catch this on the camera but it does have those perforated holes then when we go into the opposite side what's cool about this insole is the fact that it does mimic the exact traction pattern that's on the air max one outsole and that's pretty much it guys so now let's get right into the zone full look all right <laughs> going to conclude the review as well as the awful look and i hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as i did making it for y'all please let me know what you think about the air max 186 big bubble personally for me i'm definitely a fan of it but i've definitely seen a lot of people who do not like the big bubble itself but again you guys let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below and other than that y'all don't forget to like share comment and subscribe share with your friends and family and all that and just keep doing what y'all doing to help push the youtube algorithms and help my channel grow and that's pretty much it guys so i'll catch y'all in the next video peace